Damn the big slump. The one where two full nights of sleep and takeout and TV on the couch don't help you. It's been weeks. You still feel like crap. This is the worst time to feel that way. You need to be on your game. So what do you do? Slumps are a part of our normal biology. Our hormones and body ebb and flow. But the length and severity of slumps can be determined by you. To defeat a slump, you need distraction, attention, creativity, and fun. Each of our 15 ways hits on all four of these points. And we have to give honorable mentions to meditation, mindfulness, art, and exercise. They're the big four, but they're also pretty hard to commit to when you're feeling down. So we've looked into the research and found just what you need. Here are 15 ways to get out of your slump. First step, find a new obsession. This seems counterintuitive, but it's not permanent. It's a temporary obsession that will help you to get out of the hole you're in. When you're in a slump, all you can think about is how you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You need to focus your attention somewhere else. Start with something easy. Something like a new TV show or a fun hobby you can do on your own that doesn't depend on other people. Then maybe watch some travel videos. While it seems like this might upset you even more, over time it actually does help. To your brain, reality and your imagination are really similar. They bring out the same type of emotion and excitement. The more you watch videos that show you a world outside of your own, the more you understand that you're not alone here. You get to see the beauty in life in other cultures and countries. They become a part of your daily thoughts and your brain will think you're actually doing those things and moving around the world yourself. It's the right amount of dopamine to make that release intentional and healthy. Make sure the videos are longer form so you have the focus and attention you need. Short videos give that dopamine release faster, but it wears off more quickly too. Create a mini documentary. Creativity is an excellent distraction, and distraction is a great tool to get over your slump. To be creative, you need concentration and focus, which can shift attention away from negative thoughts. It's a form of mindfulness. It makes you focus on the present moment and helps you to notice things that you might have missed before. Completing a project also gives you a sense of accomplishment. This doesn't have to be for any kind of audience. You don't need fancy equipment. Choose a theme, something like hidden gems in your city, urban wildlife, the art of street performing, anything that gets you out and about. Focus on just this for a few days and you'll see that you can create magic. Random Acts of Kindness in the most popular course that Yale has ever given called The Science of Well-Being, you're taken through a journey of tasks and activities that elevate your mental health. At almost every point, there's a random act of kindness. Self-care is important, yes, but studies have shown that our brains respond far better to helping other people than it does to always helping ourselves. Using your treat meal money to feed 20 people in a soup kitchen brings you greater and more sustained happiness than that single expensive meal for one. Pay for someone's coffee, leave a sweet notice for a stranger, volunteer for a cause you care about. These things make a huge difference in more ways than one. Do themed exploration days. Staying at home isn't helping you, so you have to find the motivation to get up and get out. You have to get creative to motivate yourself, and themed exploration days are interesting and silly enough to give you that push. You could have a color red day where you notice and photograph all of the red things you come across. You could make it a nature discovery day where you explore gardens and parks and learn about specific plants, birds, or insects. Explore the architecture, street art, and music scene in your city. These are all things that you can do all by yourself. Host a solo film festival. There's a big stigma around locking yourself in your safe space and binge-watching TV. It's not necessarily bad, especially if you don't do it all the time. But when it's done with no thought and you're just going through the motions, it aggravates negative thoughts. You can do exactly that, but by making it more intentional, you have a sense of purpose and accomplishment as you're watching things. So create a list of movies from a specific genre, country, or director, decorate your space if you can, get some popcorn out, and watch away. 
cook a recipe from a different culture. Cooking has always been a core part of our human nature. Food is life. With cooking, you're creating something delicious that wouldn't exist if you didn't think about it and put it into action. Even if you're doing it alone, when you're cooking something from a different culture, you get to learn about other people, which creates connection and a bonding opportunity. Your appreciation for that culture broadens your empathy and happiness. Break your routine. There is a saying that goes, I crave routine until I'm bored, then I crave excitement until I'm overwhelmed. Fixing yourself to either excitement or routine isn't really that good. You have to move in between the two. There needs to be balance. Usually when you're in a slump, it's because you're bored. So you need to break your routine. Pick a part of your routine and take a break for about a week. Instead of eating your lunch at your desk, eat outside, or ask a coworker to go to a new restaurant with you, or move your exercise routine from before work to after work. These small changes can make a big difference. You'll feel more spontaneous and it'll push you to try new things. Sign up for a big hike. Put the payment down. Make sure it's about two months away from now and the hike is at least three nights. A big group hike gives you all the things you need to get out of your slump. Nature, exercise, and social interaction. To be able to do the hike, you'll need to train a bit. You're pushing yourself to get out more and your payment adds another layer to your commitment, to your accountability. Even better, get a friend to sign up with you to keep you both accountable. It doesn't have to be a very strenuous hike. Find something that's just slightly above your fitness level so it challenges you. You're gonna love it, okay? We promise. Take a careful look at your diet. More and more research is coming out about the power of the gut microbiome. Food affects the bacteria in your gut biome, which affects hormonal regulation, and that affects your mood and motivation. There's no one-sized-fits-all. Ideally, a diet rich in vegetables and protein is ideal, but people react differently to different foods. The only way you can know how something affects you is to monitor how you feel after you eat it. And sadly, the older you get, the more certain foods will affect you. It's like dominoes falling a certain way after you eat certain foods. And what's more, researchers have even found that people with digestive disorders are more likely to suffer from things like depression and anxiety. Monitor your sleep quality. We know that seven to eight hours of sleep is essential for mood and energy regulation, but the quality of sleep is just as important. If you're not breathing and resting properly, you can't get into REM sleep, which is when your most restorative processes happen. It's like workers on a night shift having to finish their assignment before daylight. If they get too interrupted or distracted, they can't complete the assignment properly, so they have to hand in something that's only been half done, and then you wake up and start the day over again. Take a yes day. The concept is simple yet powerful. For one day, you say yes to new opportunities and experiences, stepping out of your comfort zone. This approach forces you to break free from your routine, which can be a significant factor contributing to that slump. By saying yes, you open yourself up to new possibilities, to meet new people and do activities you wouldn't normally consider. This amps up your adrenaline and excitement, giving your spirit and mindset the boost it needs. It also helps you to overcome fears and boosts your confidence and self-esteem. The novelty of experiences on a yes day can reignite your passion for life, stimulate creativity, and provide a fresh perspective on daily routines. It's an opportunity to rediscover joy in the unexpected and learn more about your own desires and capabilities. Write a letter to your future self. When you're in a slump, it can be hard to remember your past achievements. It's hard to feel proud of yourself. Writing this letter is a reminder of how far you've come and what you've managed to achieve so far. You did it before, and my friend, you can do it again. It also makes you think about your future. You get to articulate your hopes, dreams, fears, and challenges. Those bottled up emotions get an outlet, leaving space for you to gain clarity. Set small, achievable goals. If you're in a rut, the idea of achieving big goals can feel overwhelming and unattainable. Setting small, achievable goals, on the other hand, can be a game changer. 
It helps to create a sense of order and progress in your daily life which can be empowering during times of low motivation. Each small goal achieved acts as a stepping stone toward bigger achievements and gives you a sense of accomplishment. This not only boosts your self-confidence but also helps to build momentum. Gradually, as you tick off these smaller goals, you start to see progress which can lift your spirits and pull you out of a slump. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, connect with others. When you're feeling down, the last thing you want to do is to be around people. You might even feel bad for bringing the mood down. But this is an essential part of lifting your spirits. You don't have to join a big group of people. One-on-one -on -one time with just a few good people can make a major difference. Social interactions can improve your mood and mental health thanks to the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine and oxytocin, which enhance feelings of happiness and reduce stress. Even if it's just a brief conversation, a meaningful connection can break the monotony of your routine and remind you that you're not alone in your struggles. And Alex, so you just need to do one of these things to start making some progress. The hardest part of being in a slump is knowing that you need to move but having no energy or motivation to do that. If you fight that feeling, then you've already won half the battle. And we'd love to hear from you too, so what do you usually do to get out of your slump? Share with us in the comments, my friend. Until next time, take care.